You've got to tune to the afternoon show. It is listener-powered KXP 90.3 FM in Seattle, worldwide, kxp.org. Just heard music from Common, the song The Sixth Sense, a song featuring my guest this afternoon, Bilal, who is joining me live here on the afternoon show. Uh, welcome to KXP. Thanks for having me. It is great having you back. It's been a while. Yep. It's been, a, it's been quite a minute, but I'm always honored. Um, playing the Nectar Lounge tonight. And uh, how about a couple songs for uh, KEXP listeners now, and then we'll catch up a little bit. Okay. Cool. Thank you. them calling out a melody so beautiful Yeah. 
Please tell me no They just want me to fold They just don't see what I see Now nah, baby I'm winning here The game change Ah baby Won't you Hit me again We're winning again I'm on a roll Ooh baby Y'all winning here The game change Oh, man, sounding so good. The Law Live here on the Afternoon Show. <laughs> Thank you. What was that last track? Uh, <clears throat> Winning Hand. That, that was the end of Winning Hand. Man, that sounds so good. I love the transition there at the end. Thank that you. was from uh, 2013's Love Surreal mm -hmm. here on this uh, Valentine's Day edition of the Afternoon Show. And uh, Sirens at the top there, In Another Life from the 2015 album. Uh, before we get too far down the road, do you mind introducing your uh, fantastic band here? Yes, for sure. On the guitar, we have Randy Runyon. On the drums, Mr. Joe Blacks. On the bass, Tony Whitfield. And, yeah, I've been playing with these guys for about, as a, as a unit, it's been about three or four years. Sounded fantastic. Appreciate you. 
Um, playing tonight at the uh, at the Nectar Lounge. So early in your career, you you joined uh, this rotating collective of collaborators, uh, Soul Quarians. Common was in there, Jay Dilla, mm-hmm. Erica Badu, Mostef, Q-Tip, a ton of other folks. Can you talk about the significance of this sort of community, like what that, uh, what role that played in, in your development and your life? Oh, man, it played a tremendous role in my life. I was the uh, youngest one in the group. Uh, when we took that photo for Vibe, I think I was around... 20 years old, just turned 20, so... Right after the uh, first album come out? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, if if not, um, still working on it or right just right before, yeah, so... Yeah. Man, all of those cats were like big brothers and, 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 and uh, Erica's sister to me. Do you feel like, um, like, like you collaborate with tons of artists uh, still and uh, new and emerging artists, uh, although... Uh, you know, Kendrick Lamar isn't like a new and emerging artist, but when Pimple Butterfly came out, was probably more of a new artist. Do you feel it's important to uh, to work with younger artists as well, kind of as a as a way to mentor or pay back? Um, and stay relevant, you know. Uh, I love to work with uh, just good talent, you know, whether it be uh, young or old, you know, it's something that I can make a connection with and we can do something organic that's powerful, you know, that's what I'm about. <clears throat> how, how did those come about? Do you, do, you, um, do you feel like just through your work you, you make connections that, uh, that, that you naturally attract the kind of things that are going to inspire you and, and, uh, and move you to create? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I just kind of just... Really, just stay in 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 a, in a, a creative kind of space, uh, personally, or or uh, a, a cool space personally. And a, a lot of the things that has been happening with um, outside artists coming, they've called me. You know, it's it's kind of just happened. You know, um, I think it's cool when it when it happens like that because you know it gets gets you the the vibe that that person actually wants to work with you other than, you know, a manager or somebody reaching out to people like, you know. Yeah, 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 that's what I was imagining. That's how I thought it probably worked because people hear, hear your music or have heard you in, in the various other collaborations and, uh, and that's why they're reaching out because there's something there that they, they really are mm-hmm. attracted to. Yeah. So, so um, you talk about being in this uh, creative space and, and that you guys as a unit have worked together for like three, four years now. That's about when the last album came out. Um, tell me what you're, what you're working on and, and what the future holds. Well, right now I'm working on a, a ton of things. Um, of course, I'm working on a new album. I'm hoping to have it all... Um, pretty much ready to go before the end of the year or, you know, maybe um, sooner, like yeah. summertime. Nice. Who knows? I don't like to really say when, but I'm trying to get out before this year is over. But I've also been uh, trying um, my my hand in, in some acting. I just did like a, a Canadian movie where I played uh, um, a hitchhiker. It's a, a movie called In God We Trust. And, um, was that a new experience for you? Oh my goodness, <laughs> it was cool. You know, I did like some school plays yeah, when yeah. I was around twelve. Back in Philly, here. <laughs> Back in Philly, yeah. And it, I was in the the Emperor's New Clothes, so this was way different than that, though. But it, it also had a, a cool vibe because <clears throat> of the, um, you know, the way the director did it. It was a lot of different takes, so it was from a lot of different perspectives. So it kind of reminded me of how um, I record in the studio, you know, with um, doing different takes or doing things from different perspectives. So it was cool. Once I once I got the hang of it, it, it kind of was very similar to me. Did you get much direction, like in in terms of uh, how to act and pulling out uh, emotions, et cetera? I, actually, not much because. 
it was almost like I was playing myself in the role, you know. So, um, the, the, a lot of the stuff I, I wanted up n n on some scenes, they would just let me just, I guess, improvise, you know, just like a horn player or something like that. So, it, a lot of a lot of things come together in the editing, you know, which is cool, you know. It, and is that sort of how things work musically for you too? Like you lay down a lot of different uh, tracks and then piece it together. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You 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 put a lot of ideas together uh, or throw a lot of things against the wall, and then at at the end you can shape it together like your painting or or however. Yeah. Do you uh, do you explore other art forms Absolutely. since you brought up painting? Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. Painting's one of them. I love, um, I love martial arts. I love yoga. I love, um, what other arts are there? I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> Name me an art. Well, because I'm in. <laughs> this, well, this is music. <laughs> okay, how about opera? Because. Uh, oh, I, yeah, yes, absolutely. I, I started off singing opera in high school. I went to a, a performing arts high school of, of Philadelphia. So there, I, yeah, I got really into opera. I, I, I casually was thinking about doing that for a minute. Do you ever... Uh, As a professional. Yeah, do you ever go back to that? Do you ever think that? Like, man, at some point I'm going to... Uh, I want to be in an opera. I want to do an opera. Um, hmm. It would have to be a cool... Something cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um... You know, I, I I used to think like, no, it's too much. I I have smoked too many cigarettes. But then I saw something with Pavarotti was smoking cigarettes. I was like, <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! So there might be a there might be a chance, but I don't know. I I think I'm too much of a um, improvisational kind of an artist that I would probably not be able to like stay on the the kind of uh, Page of like just strict yeah, kind of class. The rigidity of a of a script or a, <laughs> yeah. Um, Bilal live here on the afternoon show on Valentine's Day, uh, playing tonight at the uh, at Nectar uh, Lounge, and again, uh, just love having you on the show. I appreciate you taking the time well, to sure. do this. You, you mentioned yoga and martial arts, and how, I'm wondering how you keep a balance uh, in your life as an artist, and especially when you're touring? Um, like, life on the road can be really challenging for artists. It can, but I kind of just try to stick to, as much as I can, um, what I've been doing at home. And um, a major thing I've been doing right now is drinking a lot more water, you know? Um, just trying to drink water, and if you can... Uh, eat as much uh, live foods as you can, you know, on the road. Because there's going to be a bunch of hamburgers and um, french fries out there. Yeah, yeah, eating live food on the road, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, you know, they they start to have bananas and apples in, <laughs> in, in uh, the, the gas station stores. You might have to wash that, wash that joint <laughs> off really good. But, uh, yeah, so, it so helps. We're getting some tips here. Drink, drink lots of water. Lots of water. Wash your your uh, fruit and vegetables, especially if you get them at a gas station. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, below live here on the afternoon show. Do you mind playing a couple more songs? For sure. And and the next one I think is was not released. Is that true? Yeah, this next one um, is from an album I was working on uh, way back when I forget what year. Can, can we talk about it for a sec? Okay. Uh, like, um, because I, I think this might be interesting for for new and aspiring artists, because you were signed at a pretty young age, mm -hmm. and uh, in 19-ish, put out the first album, uh, and got signed to Interscope, so major yeah. label deal. Uh, and then uh, I was wondering if this was from the what would have been the sophomore album, the yes. second album, yeah. uh, which got shelved, um, or there were artistic differences, right? You were expressing okay. yourself in one way, and maybe the record label had other ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's kind of 
what went down, but a combination of that. And um, it was just in the middle of a, a transference of how things happen in the music industry. Um, I came along, and uh, when I was signed, it was, uh, it was the analog age. Everything in the in the studio was uh, tape, uh, straight, just uh, analog type of a of a vibe. And, and and that hierarchy of a major label. Yeah, like going that. into the second. My second album is when everything switched over to digital, so everything was easily bootlegged. It could ease the internet was extremely new. Um, they had a thing called MySpace. It was just a, it was a transference of how where, where we are right now, technology wise, with music and you know, uh, digitally, and streaming. This was like. The, this was the changeover is when I was working on this album. So it was just a lot of stuff happening. And then add that with the creative differences, you know, anything could happen if Cat's, you know, not agreeing with yeah, what's yeah. going on. You know, it's much easier to just, you know, leak some stuff. And at that, <laughs> at that time, were you sort of pro getting it out there quick? And Yeah, I mean, when I didn't leak it, but once it got out there, I just... I had to go with the wave and kind of learn how everything um, was operating on the fly. You know, I had to just uh, move with what was what was coming coming to me. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta be able to react and move quick. And uh, certainly at that time, the major labels weren't. Mm -hmm. And it turned out it turned out good for me. You good. know, because we were able to tour off of this music. And Off the music that leaked. So. <laughs> that leaked. At first I was like, oh, no. The label was like, see, well, we might as well start over. And I was like, wow, all of that good music. And then we started to do shows, and everybody in the audience had these new things called iPods. And they were like, play number five, they play number two. Songs. And I was like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> and it was, it winded up being this bootleg, legendary music that I guess... <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great story. Yeah. Well, let's hear a song from that. The, uh, the sure. never officially released Love for Sale record. <laughs> yes, this song is called White Turns to Gray.
Stray and white turns to gray. It's Bilal live here on the afternoon show, along with Randy Joe Tone. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. Great sounding set. Thank you so much. Looking forward to new music when you're ready to put it out. Oh, I appreciate that. You know, I'm excited about what's to come. Cool. <laughs> 
Uh, what's to come uh, in the short term, playing the Nectar Lounge tonight and then uh, heading down to California for a, a string of shows. Yes. Thank you again. Uh, huge thanks to uh, the audio video crew here, Justin Alia, Kendall, Carlos, Kevin Suggs on sound, Maddo, Allison, and thanks to all the donors who make uh, in studios like this one possible. It's listener-powered KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.